Welcome to Medium Rare, VR sculpting tips served up fast. Episode 9. Stencils, stencils, stencils? This week I show you how I make stencils in Medium. It leads on directly from last week's, so if you haven't seen that one then I would go and watch that now. Okay, so let's just get to it. Okay, so stencils. I was trying to find a way of projecting stencils onto sculpts in Medium and this is what I've come up with. It's a direct follow-on from last week's um, tutorial where I showed you how to make these details, these surface details that conform directly to the surface, uh, which I actually found out while I was trying to find stencils. So if you, if you haven't watched last week's, you really should, but I'll show you the quick basics. <laughs> this is the mess that I used um, to make this raised piece. I used this and the face and intersect and then I scaled up using using the move tool I uh, grabbed the surface and scaled it gently. Pull the trigger with grid snap on and scaled up like that, except obviously it was below the surface before, and they gently raised it above the surface. Okay, so that's what happened last week. Go and watch it, that'll make more sense. This week, I show you how you can make this be part of the surface um, so that it's painted on, it has no raised, I mean as much as you could use this, you really could for most things, um, but I wanted to know how you could do it so that it was part of the same surface and painted on essentially. Um, that's what I was looking for, for things like labels, um, a can with the printing on, adding text, um, stencils, that sort of thing, and complex pieces like this, uh, rather than have to paint it individually, uh, which would be painstaking and um, difficult. So if there were better tools and medium for that sort of thing, then this wouldn't be such a thing, but it is. So you can see that um, I've got this here and you can still use the, the sculpting tools essentially to tidy up this paint. It's not paint yet, but it will be. So you see, I can do this sort of thing where I can straighten the edges, make it much neater. If this had been a better resolution when I actually merged it down, I wouldn't need to do this so much here, but it is what it is, just for demonstration. Okay, things like that, and um, here, you can also, you know, we could be using the move tool here, and then um, realigning things, like, there we go, that's going to be a little bit of a wobbly line if we don't swap that, so, you know, fix that wobble, fix this wobble. So, what we're doing here is we're using sculpting tools essentially to improve our paint. This is going to be the paint, you'll see. Because the sculpting tools are far superior to the painting tools. The painting tools are lame as paint, lame, no offence, but it's true. Okay. I would say that I'm going to give you a tutorial on how I use some of the paint tools a bit better than, um, than you might first suspect. But this first. So there we go. We can use the sculpting tools to help us get where we need to be with the painting first. Now, as I said, we had a duplicate. Obviously, we needed a duplicate to make the intersect here. So we have a duplicate of the face hiding here. Okay, I'll put it just the face. And then we have made this, what I'm calling a mold here, which is just a box that's the same size and shape. Uh, it fully surrounds the head. And that's the idea. I'm going to hide everything else just now, just for ease of um, viewing. So. Okay. So just the face and the mold. You can see 
faces still in there inside the mould a little bit here but that's okay because the actual uh, stencil that we're cutting um, doesn't come that far down so it's okay okay so face mould face mould first and then the face and then subtract uh, what dafty right and then what we end up with is a perfect mould of the face and if we go this is our raised stencil and our face take the mould we're going to take the face and we're going to take the raised stencil and we're going to merge them this will take a while this is resolution dependent so you do need a lot of resolution in order for this to work if you don't have the resolution if you don't have the memory then this technique is not for you it just won't work um, so you can see now that these are both on the same they're both on the same object now this also shows us why this technique works you see the color from this one bleeds somewhat down into the belly of the other one so when we skim off the top using this mold which we're about to do subtract we're taking the the face we're deleting this mold which obviously has a perfect in the imprint of the original face we're basically skimming the stencil the raised stencil right back to the surface of the face and there we go so now we have the the color and there is no raised edge it's pushed right back it's skimmed it's skimmed flat back to the face you can switch everything back on again and there we go i mean you can see it's actually still a little bit untidy but it's a lot easier to clean that up than it would be to paint it all from scratch and um, we've got you know very clear guidelines nice clean straight lines you know it's very difficult to paint straight lines like these uh, using the tools that are available. Um, you know, sharp edges are not really in the tool set. Okay, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you find it at all useful, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.